Bob John passed away last fall in Princeton, and personally, I have to admit that I am still grieving him. For me, it was very much like losing my father for a second time. However, since most of you didn't know him personally, um, I'm going to leave the personal at that and discuss why he was important to everybody, really, but especially to the members of this professional community, both communities that are joined here for this meeting. Um, the Pear Lab at Princeton, Princeton Engineering Anomalies Research, originally started because Bob was living up to a promise made to a student and there was nobody else in Princeton's engineering faculty who was willing to touch the subject of PK, or as we called it for most of Bob's career, uh, consciousness-related anomalies or engineering anomalies. Sadly, the reason Pear closed when Bob retired from the university was basically the same. There was still nobody else in the engineering faculty willing to touch the subject. I am inclined to say that more than anything else, this was a demonstration of Bob's integrity, that he was not willing to hide from observed truth or lie to himself or anybody else about what he had witnessed. He had observed a phenomenon that could not be accounted for in current theories, and he felt it needed investigation. Of course, one of the first things that Bob did when starting into this field was to find somebody who could address the psychological and parapsychological aspects of it better than he could, and that began a long and very fruitful partnership with Brenda Dunn, who is not here at this time, um, partly because of all of the aftermath she is having to deal with as Bob's literary executor. The, uh, the two of them uh, created a laboratory that in my opinion, had a tremendous impact on the entire field of psychic research, to call it by its name without euphemisms. And I feel that they had very important insights into the nature of such a program, as well as finding important results. Bob and Brenda were both very clear that uh, they did not have subjects. The people who produced the effects were part of the experiment. The experimenters were not on some sort of pedestal above them observing them. The focus was on the phenomenon, not the people. They refused to use the word paranormal, at least in internal technical discussions. And they tried to break people of the habit of using it publicly as well, because it was their very strong contention that whatever this is, whatever phenomenon it is we're all here talking about, it's normal. It is part of the natural capacity of the human mind and body. And as a consequence of that premise, they also refused to search or screen for special people with special talents. They believed very firmly that this was a universal capability. Their findings, uh, to some extent, confirmed that, although they did find that individuals were very idiosyncratic and different. The ability is widespread in the population. Um, they did examine remote perception, as well as the PK that first got Bob started, 
and their remote perception studies, what would probably be called remote viewing in this community, were also uh, very successful and informative. Um, I would say that their other important findings were that um, the effect does seem to be mediated by the subconscious, as, as various people have alluded to. Many different types of, of systems show this effect, and that, it, that distortions of randomness can also happen unconsciously in the vicinity of people and groups experiencing strong emotions. So, having tried to encapsulate 30 years in a few minutes, I would like to end by saying that, for, that there will be a memorial service for Bob John on July 1st at 1 p.m. in the Princeton University Chapel with a reception afterward at the faculty club, and that anybody who would like to attend should contact Brenda Dunn, BJD, at icrl.org. <laughs>